Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com. A lot of the image editing uh, to optimize images, really we don't need to leave uh, Lightroom for those type of edits. But if you want to create special effects such as this one here, then obviously we're going to take the image into Photoshop. Um, I'll start, this is basically the starting image, so I'll just uh, use the keyboard shortcut Command E on a Mac, Control E on a PC in order to open that up inside of Photoshop. As well as showing you this particular effect, I'm also going to show you how to create an action so that we don't have to run through the same steps every time we want to do this particular effect. So we're going to open up the actions panel here. Now uh, I keep um, groups of actions inside of folders. Um, so the first thing that you would want to do is if you're trying to create a group uh, or filters along the same sort of visual effects is you'll click on the uh, new action set there, create new set icon. Now I've already got my motion blur, which is the one that I'm going to be using here. So with that folder selected, I'll just click on the create new action icon there and I'll call this V2 and it's going into the motion blur set and then I'll hit record. Now a little red light comes on at the bottom of the actions panel to say that we're recording. Um, don't panic, it's, uh, it's basically uh, just uh, consider each step carefully. Um, uh, the time that you uh, take in between each steps is not being recorded. Just every click of the mouse and command is being recorded and that will play out much faster uh, when we actually play the actions back. Now. Um, the first step that I'm going to choose is to right click on that background layer and choose convert to smart object. And we are basically following a non-destructive workflow here. This will give me options later on for changing in my mind about some of the filter settings. We're now going to come over to the filter menu and we're going to choose um, blur and choose motion blur. And the motion blur that I'm looking for is um, I've set the angle to 90 degrees. You can use this little steering wheel here uh, to fine tune the blur. You can see we can get a, that diagonal blur or I can set it completely vertically um, uh, for that blur. Now the distance here is um, it's going to play out differently on uh, different uh, resolution images and different effects. Uh, the best resolution that I'm finding here is the one where the two bridge columns is actually extending out uh, to the top of the image which is somewhere around that thousand pixel mark. I'm going to select OK in this instance. You see each step is being recorded in the actions there converting to small object adding the motion blur I'm going to select the um, Smart Filter Mask now and I'm going to remove the effect completely by filling that uh, mask with black. Edit, choose Fill and uh, with foreground color black selected at 100%, I'll select OK. Now the motion blur is still there, it's just being concealed by this black layer mask. And what I'm going to do in order to protect uh, an area along that horizon line is I'm going to sort of shrink um, that area of masking. So I'm going to come in with the free transform command, that's Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. And then we'll just uh, drag that in just so it sits around that horizon line like so. Uh, quite a narrow little window um, there and we'll commit that. And again, I'm going to uh, click on that layer mask because I want to soften the transition and I'll soften that transition this time uh, with a Gaussian blur and we'll select uh, maybe 40 or 50 pixels, maybe a little bit more just to uh, create a nice gradual transition there and then select OK again. And that really is uh, the effect played out. Uh, so without much further ado, I just need to stop that action. Now it's probably worth playing the action back just to make sure that um, we've got all of those settings correct. So if I go into my history panel and click um, the, uh, the starting point for this image, uh, we can now go back to the actions panel, select the action in the folder that we want to play out and press the play button 
and you'll see that's very quick okay if at any time you want to uh, stop and be able to control how much blur you're applying at any time during the settings we can put um, steps in there so this is the motion blur if I just click on that motion blur this will allow me um, when the action is playing out to stop so I can choose the appropriate amount of blur uh, for this particular um, effect that we're looking for I've probably also um, apply another stop on that Gaussian blur there okay let's try and uh, play that one out we'll go back to the starting point I'll go back to my actions panel and we'll click play again now okay so there you can see it stops so we control the angle and also the distance uh, so if the um, the action uh, default distance isn't the correct one I can modify that now I click OK the action will proceed and now it's coming with the amount of blur for the mask and I might just increase that slightly in this instance and select OK and play out okay so there we have it we've got an action um, that um, we can repeat an effect uh, without much trouble at all if you wanted to share these actions then uh, just uh, select the, uh, the the set of actions and then click on the uh, fly out menu there and choose save actions and we could save these actions off to the desktop and then share them with friends you can also find obviously actions are available online and they're very easy to install basically just download them if they come zip just unzip them double click and away you go they will self install inside of Photoshop's action panel Okay, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com.